Back at the St. Paul Civic Center, it's Hibbing against Edina. This is semifinal play, championship round. We're just about set to go. We're going to be tossing it up to the booth, and uh, we talked about some of the stars and uh, the Hibbing and Edina team earlier. Mark, one that we did forget, number 16, Marty Nanny, son of Lou, and of course, we should toss it up to uh, Lou and Chris Cuthbert right now and uh, find out what's going to go on. I know Lou's going to be modest, but let's face it, the uh, line for Edina with Marty Nanny, Jerry Kaler, and Pete Hankinson had a big night last night. Well, they've been playing very well. They've got Hankinson in the middle, who's a very clever hockey player. He's very dogged. He's on the puck quite a bit. Kaler with great speed on the outside can shoot the puck well. They work pretty well. They've had uh, a real good streak of games going for the past nine games, and their most uh, probably valuable asset thus far has been their lack of giving up goals, and this is something you wonder if the law of averages is going to run out against them or not, but they, I don't believe they've given up a goal in nine games, and that's an important statistic for them. Louis, is that a credit, really, you think, to the team defense, or should more credit go to the Schwartzbauer angle from in goal for Edina? I've really been impressed with the way Schwartzbauer has been playing, especially the last six games. He's uh, just seemed to really have come up with a great deal of confidence in his ability to stop the puck. But at the same time, the Dyna defense is very unsung, yet very sound and stable. Uh, Twilliger moved back there from forward. He's big, he's strong, he moves the puck well. They've got uh, Steve Vellner, as you know, come back, and Chris Bonvino is a big man, strong. But at the same time, when you put in a couple of youngsters, they had Faust returning, but the two kids, Mendel and Heinrich, are just sophomores, and they've come in and played with a great deal of poise. And actually, uh, I, I think their great strength is their ability to clear the rebound. You're not seeing any team going against Edina getting enough second shots, and that's usually when you have to watch out because uh, goals are scored on rebounds, and there are not a lot of rebounds being left around with that defense back then. Lou, Paul Ranheim and Tom Hansen are getting a lot of attention in this state tournament from scouts, and I wondered, as an NHL general manager, what you see in these two players and what the scouts are looking for this week in watching those two. Ranheim is a 11th or 12th grader, and he's ready to be drafted this year. Hansen's not. So first you look at Ranheim and you say, what can he do? Where do you project him? He's big, he's strong, he's fast, he's got a very, very strong shot at the same time with a good release. He's got great speed, especially on the outside. If you look at him as a pro prospect, you might say you might even play him on the outside because he's so strong and so quick. Uh, he should move the puck to his backhand a little more, but that's something that comes. You can't expect kids to do everything. He's got exceptional talent. Hansen on defense for Hibbing, very quick, very good at anticipating the play. He moves up into the play extremely well. The kids that have played in this tournament, especially in defense, that have gone on to be successful in the NHL, uh, Reed Larson for one, Phil Halsey uh, just a couple years ago, they've got that ability to move into the play, get themselves in position for a shot, uh, to set up a play, and yet they have the quickness to get back, and that's what Hanson's got. Hibbing ranked number one in the state, and uh, some pollsters say Edina's rated number two. And the question has to be asked, does that mean this is for the championship game right here? Do you think the team that wins this will win the state championship? Chris, I, I can't say that they would. I was very, very impressed with St. Paul Johnson last night. Uh, Bloomington Kennedy has got a great deal of determination and tenacity up front. They don't have the kind of balance that I would think Johnson has. And going into that game and looking at that game, I would have to pick Johnson just because their balance is a little better and they've got that great goal scorer in Wallen and Howell's playing so superbly as is their goaltender. So right now, uh, it's going to be who's got to beat Johnson. Edina looked very strong yesterday. They had a solid win. Yet uh, Johnson has been really playing their best hockey of the season, as is Edina at this time. Edina's got to get by Hibbing, which is really going to be tough. Johnson's got to get by Kennedy, and uh, I don't think that this game at all is going to determine the uh, championship necessarily. These two teams have met once this year, and it was Hibbing beating Edina by a score of 3-2. to two. Now let's meet the starting lineups for this afternoon's semifinal game. Seven, the Hibbing Blue Jackets. In goal, number one, John Hyduk. At defense, number two, Tom Hansen. And number 12, Jerry Kristoff. Starting at center for Hibbing, number four, Pat Iozo. What are these signals? We've never, we don't have any signals. <laughs> at wing, number seven, Nick Andrikan. 
And number 14, Pat Marolt. Coaching the Blue Jackets, Bill Olson. And now let's meet the champions of Section 6, the Edina Hornets. Starting in goal for Edina, number one, Chris Schwartzbauer. At defense, number 15, Tom Terwilliger. And number 17, Chris Bonfino. At center, number 11, Paul Ranheim. At wing number nine, Bill Mork. And number 10, Craig Shepard. Coaching the Hornets, Willard Eichela. Your officials for this afternoon's semifinal game, Richard Lick and Greg Shepard. Well, Lou, the obvious tough task for Hibbing and is to crack through that defense of Adina because they haven't, they've allowed one goal in their last five games. It certainly is going to be a tough task, but they've got the ability to do it sometimes. Twentieth state tournament with a record of 35 and 20. They've never lost in the semifinals. Well, they've got a great history. They've had some tremendous hockey teams coming through there, and a great deal of credit's got to go to Coach Willard Eichel. He's been around for a long time. He just seems to prepare his clubs properly as it gets later in the year. They seem to come up with their best efforts. And because of the efforts that they've had through the years, he's sitting back there with a, quite a few state championships in his belt. On the other hand, Hibbies have tremendous tradition also. They had a fellow, George Purpich, who we should acknowledge, one of the finest gentlemen in the state of Minnesota and one of the great hockey men in Minnesota. Brought a lot of teams down here. And this team is somewhat reminiscent of the ones they've always had. Very quick up front. They've got a great deal of determination. A very solid hockey team. And with that young defense, they're going to be heard from again uh, next year because they've got six players back there that are juniors, sophomores. And when you've got that kind of skill back there, you don't give up many goals. You win a lot of games that way. Seventh trip to the state championship for Hibbing. And their record is 15 and 4 in tournament play. They are champions in 52 and 73 and trying to be champions in 1984. Number one ranked Hibbing against number two Adina. And we're ready to go. Paul Ranheim at center against Pat Ioso and Tom Henson wraps it down ice for Hibbing. Back is Chris Bonvino. Bonvino in the corner ties the puck up. It comes loose. Shepard can't clear the zone. And now Tom Twilliger, the big defenseman, passes on the right side into the center ice zone. And this is Ranheim at the blue line. Good move, Ranheim, the shot, and Hyduke the save. So Hyduke is tested early by Paul Ranheim of the Hornets. Quite a play by Ranheim coming down. He faked going to the outside on Hanson, drew it through him, came through. He actually could have gone closer because he's got such great speed. As, as it is, it's still not wrong to take that shot. He got a good shot away, Hyduke making the save. Earlier this year when Hibbing beat Edina 3-2, Hyduke was just sensational. And he looks like the fellow that Hibbing's gonna have to turn to because he will get tested today. 
Dornbach against Iozo on this draw. Dornbach gets the face off. Hatch fanned on the shot. And out come the Hibbing Blue Jackets in over the line. Taken down on the play, Iozo. Following up, Maralt falls behind the net. Loose puck. After it, there is Mendel, and Mendel wins the puck for Adina. Out on the right side, this is Jerry Mullen flipping it in for the Hornets. I do go to the net, leaves for Hansen. Hansen wins the puck free for the Blue Jackets, and they come out of their zone nicely with Iozo to center. Iozo flips it into the corner as the Hibbing Blue Jackets make their first line change. Grillo, Grillo is in the corner. This is Iozo still out on the ice. Grillo helping him out. And the puck slides loose, and this is Andy Hatch. A lead pass from Mullen too far. It slides into Hibbing territory, and they are changing on the fly quickly. One person he is going to have to watch out for. Grillo was very impressive yesterday. Dangerous right winger with a good shot. Here's Nikolov into the zone. He couldn't get loose, and back comes Adina. A lead pass for Jerry Kaler. Kaler with the line, called on the offside. People always point to Andrikin and Iozo Moralt as a big scoring line for Hibbing, which they are. But yesterday, Hibbing got some very fine play from Catani and Grillo and Zoizel. And those fellows are a dangerous trio. Grillo, by the way, initiated one of the big goals for them to get them to roll in yesterday against St. Cloud Apollo. Catani at center, a goal and two assists yesterday. And from the faceoff, it's Catani working his way in. A shot, Schwartzbauer, his first save, and he hangs on for a faceoff. There's a break in the action. We'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. We'll see Schwartzbauer getting tested here early as he makes the save. The rebound going right in front. Very wisely he falls on and gets the whistle. Face off to his left. Five shutouts in his last six games. Katani almost walked in from the faceoff, kept in at the line. And this is Katani with the puck again. Antonio Katani centered it, but it's fed up over the blue line as Kaler missed the pass. And Hibbing takes over at their own line. Pass for Zezel failed to click. It slides into Adina territory out in front. Here's a shot from the point knocked down in front. And out breaks Adina. Diving for the puck, Nanny can't get a hold of it, and it's knocked back in. Schwartzbauer leaves behind the net. Bonvino around the boards on this near side. It's Kaler up ahead to Hankinson. Hankinson to Nanny. Nanny hits the line and lost control. As Adina changes on the fly, a lead pass for Grillo just too far, and it's shot back in to the Hibbing Blue Jacket zone. Belner behind the net. Knocks it forward. This is Grillo trying a lead pass for Kasner, which failed to click. And now it's shot in on Schwartzbauer, who gloves it and steers it aside. Mendel around the boards. A pass for Ranheim, and here comes Ranheim to center. Bill Mork is on the left wing, and Shepard, Ranheim looking to center. Behind the net, taken to the boards. Puck still loose. Craig Shepard battling for it there. But it's taken away by Gostad. Out in the center ice zone. Out on the left wing, it is a shot by Kasner knocked down. At the point, Vidmar's shot goes to the corner. Kasner trying to get it in front, and he loses control. And back comes Ranheim, flicking it into the center ice zone. And again, the Dyna changing very quickly. We've played three minutes and 34 seconds and we've had a number of line changes in the first period already. They've been coming with much more pressure early in the game than they did yesterday against St. Cloud Apollo. They look sharper early than they have before. Here's Maralt to Iozo who has got no call and Andy Hatch turns back. Here comes Adina. The pass for Dornbach on the right wing. A shot by Bonvino goes to the corner. Dornbach in for checking, but Maralt has it for Hibbing. He's taken to the boards. Puck is loose. Dornbach still with it. Dornbach with some good moves. Finally is checked, and it's kicked to the line. Kept in, however. Here's a shot by Hatch, which went, which went wide. Around the boards it comes, and Andrikin knocks it to center. Iozo is there. He flicks it into Adina territory, and it's cleared right back out. Krista over on the far side for Hansen. He fires it in. Belner is there. Steve Belner with the puck. Good pass on the left wing. The 
is Nanny over the line. Broke it up as Jerry Mullen couldn't get loose. Mullen now feeds it back in. Andy Hatch is knocked down. Mullen follows up. Puck is loose. Now goes Moralt. Puck kept in the zone. And here's a chance for Hankinson. Hankinson is checked at the last second with 10-01 left in the first period. There's a break in the action, and we'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. And Dinah and Hibbing are scoreless. Through four minutes, 59 seconds, face-off in the Hibbing zone. And from the draw, Hankinson gets it back. Kaler just turned and fired it and hit a leg. And out come Hibbing. This is Richie Bryant over the line. Bryant had a goal yesterday. He clears it in behind the net, and Marty Nanny picks it up on the other side. Up ahead to Hankinson. Hankinson checked in the zone, but Nanny follows up over the line, loses control, and back comes Zezel. Zezel lines up his shot right on Schwartzbauer. Puck loose in the zone. This is Catani centering it out in front, and it's cleared to the boards. Zezel behind the net to Antonio Catani, trying to center. He's knocked down, and they hold it for a faceoff. Hibbing's balance starting to come through as it did in the third period last night. Every line out there is putting on some pressure. They've had some opportunities, but even if they haven't had great opportunities, they've had some good puck possession, much more than they had early against St. Cloud Apollo. They seem to be continuing to play as they did in that third period against Apollo putting some strong forecheck on the Dyna defense. Mark Kasner at center for the Hipping Blue Jackets gets the draw. It comes back. Gostad shot knocked down. Loose puck in the slot area. Cleared away by Adina. A pass on the left wing as Adina breaks in and hauled down on the play. And a penalty upcoming against the Hipping Blue Jackets. With the score, Adina nothing, hitting nothing. This is Hockey 84, live from the St. Paul Civic Center. Bryant will go off for tripping Jeff Johnson right here as Johnson receiving a pass from Jay Moore, trying to cut in from the left side. Bryant taking his legs out from under him. It's the Hagen, pardon me, for tripping. He died on the power play. Adina one for two on the power play against Rozo while Hibbing successfully killed all three penalties they took yesterday. On this power play, they put Ranheim back on the point. They try to get him the puck back at the blue line. He has the option to go to the top of the circle and shoot, or he looks across ice to Andy Hatch, who's got a real good release, and he lets fly with it. Right now, they're using Craig Shepard in that position and Mullen, but look for the guy on the far side to receive a pass from Ranheim if he's got no shot. So five forwards on the power play. And yet it is Andrikin breaking out for Hibbing. Andrikin fanned on the shot. It rolls harmlessly to Schwartzbauer. Quick whistle, and we'll get a face-off in the Adina zone, and I don't think Schwartzbauer wanted that or really expected the whistle to happen. Well, Schwartzbauer was a little slow moving that puck away to his wingman uh, coming back on the play. Shepard was in position to take it, but he, he wasn't that slow. It was a quick whistle on our three spot. From the face-off, Dornbach knocks it to an open wing. Back comes Andrikin, so Hibbing starting well on this penalty killing situation. Andrikin in the corner. He's the team leader for the Blue Jackets. Goes down, loose puck, and now Adina gets possession with 128 remaining, remaining in the penalty to John Hagen. Here they come over the line. Pass back to Ranheim. Ranheim now moves in a step or two. Back to Dornbach. Dornbach at the left point, clears it in. A shot goes over the net off the stick of Hatch. Now it's fed back to Dornbach at the point again. Left side, Ranheim. Back to Dornbach. Dornbach winds up the shot right on. Hyduk has it, and he looked behind, but it was underneath him. Well, that's the other option on the power play that they use, and they use very successfully. As a matter of fact, yesterday they got a goal from it. Twilliger did, as Dornbach firing from up high in the middle. Uses the screen of Twilliger. Twilliger sometimes can deflect it, sometimes right on net. Here's Dornbach shooting the puck, hoping for a rebound. Hyduk going down, and you see at that moment Mullen charging the net for a rebound as Twilliger ties up the defenseman Hansen on the left. That's Twilliger on your left tying up Hansen, and if a rebound comes down, Mullen would have been all alone. 
Though I said they were using five forwards, they're not, but the defenseman out there is playing a forward position, Twilliger. That's right. They move Twilliger up front to screen the goaltender. He's big, he's strong, he gets good position, and sometimes if he can tie up the defenseman with his body and keep his stick free, he can deflect a shot into the net as he did yesterday. With the score, a die to nothing, hipping nothing. This is Hockey 84, live from the St. Paul Civic Center. Still repairing the ice here at the St. Paul Civic Center. Lou, obviously, Willard Eichel does not want his troops to uh, get tired today. He has already made a number of line changes. He's used all four lines, and we've just played a half of the first period. Well, Willard does that every game. He, do, he does that quickly, too. He wants everybody to get in the game, which is a good tactic. You go out there for 35, 40 seconds, get off the ice, get everybody in the game one swing around, unless there's a penalty or a power play opportunity he just runs right through the four lines gets everybody a feel of the ice the game the conditions and then he goes with his lines from there and he doesn't really concern himself about who's playing against whom on the opposite team with the exception of a high scoring say one line or one individual in the other team and in that instance he will then not put his fourth line against that one line other than that he's willing to play any of his people against any on the other team you're looking at Schwartzbauer, as we were saying earlier, has had a great deal of success. He's had five games, just given up one goal. And uh, look at a few of the Diana fans and band members. Here's a shot from Dornbach on that power play. You're going to see Hajduk. You see, you see him lean in, trying to make sure he gets to see the puck. He saw it. He made the save. He wasn't sure if it deflected away, but it saved between his legs. But Hajduk, very wisely, going from a crouch position on a screen shot, Terry Sachek started that years ago. He went right down, put his head down. He used to be right above the pads. And he was the first one that seemingly went, was looking right through his pads to pick up that screen shot. Now the goaltenders, when they're alert, that's what they do when someone's shooting from way out. 54 seconds left in the power play for Adina. This is big Tom Twilliger with possession. Twilliger back to the point. It comes across to Dornbach. Dornbach, a gifted little center playing the point. Now there's a shot off the post. Rebound. Ranheim, they score! Twilliger might have put it in. Ranheim hit the uh, one shot, took another shot. I think the saves were made, and the puck was lying free on the ice. But I believe Twilliger might have put it in. It was a fine opportunity for Ranheim. He stayed right there. He maintains his ground. Look at him at the left of your screen after the shot is taken by Hatch. He's right there, takes one shot, and hit the upper crossbar, came down. Williger is fighting for it in front, number 15. I believe he puts it in. A good play by Dornbach there to Hatch. Hatch getting a quick shot away off the pipe. There's the one shot hitting the pipe by Ranheim and pushed in by Twilliger. I'm not so certain that shot by Ranheim didn't go in initially. But Twilliger will get credit for his second goal of the state championship. Medina draws first blood. They lead Hibbing 1-0. Well, the strength of Twilliger pays off in front. However, I'm not so certain that first one by Ranheim didn't go in. It looked to me right. like it was in the net. They, they should have called it initially. So Hibbing trails by one as they move it down into Hornet territory. Here's a pass in front and a shot just wide. That was close as it was almost tied. Good pressure and now Adina breaks out. Down the ice comes the fourth line. Johnson in front and the shot by Sarp just went wide. Back to the point. Mendel in front. There's a shot. They score. That's a fourth line tenor. Jay Moore, just a sophomore, called up halfway through the year, getting a shot right from 10 feet in front of Hyduk, beating him down low. That's the depth of the diner the Willow Reichler uses so often, giving him experience along the way, and it pays off for them right here. Right after Hibby missing a golden opportunity down deep, Louis Kasner, you'll see number 13, Jay Moore, right there in front, burying that puck lower to the net, putting Dine up two to nothing. Two goals in less than a minute. Moore set up Sarp for that great chance, and then they got another shortly after, and Adina leads by two. That's a swing of two goals because Hibby had an outstanding chance all alone in front of the net just to have the puck go wide. Edina comes right back down. That sophomore center, Jay Moore, fires a low one right through Hyduke's legs, putting Edina head two to nothing. Jay Moore, 5'6", 140-pounder, has put the Hornets ahead by two. Here comes Andrick in centering it in front. Belner knocks it to the corner. 
And up with it is little Jerry Kaler. Kaler can't clear the zone, now gets it outside the line. Hankinson's pass for Nanny, who is hit by Hanson. And back come the Hibbing Blue Jackets inside the line. Good check there by Vellner, and Mendel takes over. This is Big Bob Mendel. Hitting the blue line, Mendel slides it through. Nanny the shot, and Hyduke makes the save. There's a break in the action. We'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. We are back at the St. Paul Civic Center, face-off in Hibbing territory, and the Blue Jackets clear it down ice. Mike Grillo going after it against Terwilliger, who gets there first. Terwilliger up ahead to Bill Mork. And this is Mork in the neutral area, backhanding into Nibbing territory. And now Adina four checking, loose puck, Ranheim the shot, I do the save. And now the Blue Jackets carry it out. Down ice is Richie Bryant to his check. And Adina starts back once again with Mork at center along with Ranheim. The back pass for Ranheim failed to click. And Antonio Catani starts back. Catani hits the line, working in, but he's got three men to beat, couldn't do it. Following up on the play was Grillo, and he lost control, and Adina just dumps it out to center. This is Grillo again, backhanding it into the zone, and Bonvino goes back for it. Around the boards on the right wing, Andy Hatch can't get loose. Now it's Bonvino, this is Hatch on the near side, Mullen playing the right wing, and Dornbach with it at center. He lost control. Hatch follows up. Hatch drops it for Mullen. Lost it in his skates. And Hibbing will take over. It's cleared back into Blue Jacket territory. Dornbach forechecking. Dornbach in the corner. Can't control. And Gostad takes over. Sean Gostad gets it ahead of John Zezel. Starts down ice. Zezel against the boards. Gostad follows up. And uh, Dinah takes it away from the Blue Jackets who can't get anything organized offensively in this first period. 4.45 remaining. The Hornets of Adina leading 2 to nothing. Mike Vidmar behind the net. He has a grade point average of 4.0. Knocking it down ice. And back to get it is John Faust. A 5'9", 150-pound senior. Faust into the center zone, and Kaler knocks it the rest of the way as Adina completes another line change. Richie Bryant standing behind his net. Long lead pass, trying to send away Andrikin. He just missed it. Andrikin goes after it, but Terwilliger beats him to the puck. Gets it ahead to Kaler. Little Kaler turns it up ice. Here's Jerry Kaler hitting the line, knocked down by a step on the left wing was Pete Hankinson. Well, Hankinson just getting a step offside as Kaler coming down made a move. Hanson made a good play, getting a piece of Kaler, slowing him down just long enough to put Hankinson offside. Otherwise, he had a three-on-one break there. Good play by defenseman Tom Hanson. Tom Tewilliger and Jay Moore, the goal scorers in this first period as Katani rifles it in and goes after it. He's bumped off the puck and back come the Hornets. This is Hankinson looking for Nanny on the right wing. That's broken up. And Hanson clears it to an open wing and down ice. Schwartzbauer leaves it for Terwilliger who falls down on the play. In the corner, it's dropped back to the point. Kristoff knocks it in. It comes back to Kristoff at the right point. He clears it around the corner. Behind the net, Kelly Esty is there, along with Gazich. They go to the boards. Hankinson's lost his stick. He knocked it forward for Nanny. And now the Hornets get a face-off in their own zone. Well, Hankinson losing his stick very wisely. Played that puck along the boards, waited for someone to come to he and Nanny, and then throws the puck. He's got no stick. You might as well get a whistle as quick as you can because you're not much good at there without a stick. You might be able to body somebody off the puck, but usually what happens, you start reaching for him, grabbing him, and you end up with a penalty. 317 left in the first period. The Hornets of Adina leading two to nothing. This is that fourth line of Moore, Johnson, and Sark for the Hornets. Loose puck behind the net. Pressure here by Hibbing. They center it out in front, and it's broken up, but we've got a penalty upcoming against Adina. Edina playing 
tough in front of the net, but getting a little carried away in that instance, going to end up with an interference penalty, giving Hibbing the opportunity to go into power play right now. And Hibbing trailing by two would want to capitalize on this power play as Jay Moore taking down one of the Hibbing boards in front of the net. You see number 13 Moore right off to the right of Schwartz bar right here. He takes down Iozo down in front of the net. Interference penalty, Hibbing on the power play. First penalty of the tournament for Edina. Hibbing was one for one on the power play in their game against St. Cloud Apollo yesterday. And from the face off, they jam up in the board against the boards and get another draw to the left of Chris Schwartzbauer. Well, Hibbing moving Griller up front on the power play here. Griller's got a good shot, too. He's a right hand shot. They play him on the left side in the power play, giving him a better shooting angle. Very dangerous man when he gets a puck around the net. Back to get it, Richie Bryant. And he will leave it for Katani, the leading scorer in the Iron Range this year. Now Grillo over the line, working down the left wing, puts on the brakes in the corner. Taken to the boards by Belner. The puck comes loose. Nikolov backhands it back into the corner. Here's Katani knocked down. A shot by Bryant. Schwartzbauer going the other way made the save. Nikolov again. Working it to this near side. John Zezel knocks it behind the net. And back it comes to Bryant. Bryant works into the center. Shot right on goal, and Schwartzbauer hangs on. But Bryant took the shot from the top of the... Actually, right inside the blue line, much farther out than the top of the circle. When you're doing that, the only time you're dangerous is when you got someone screening in front of the net or breaking for the net. You see here, no hitting people moving towards the net quick enough. Schwartzbauer's got a lot of time to handle the puck and freeze on it. Grillo coming from the right side, just got to time it a little quicker, get to that net quicker so he can screen the goalie or deflect it, bother the goalie somewhat. Bryant's got to wait a second to give that man time to get there. One minute, three seconds left in the penalty to Jay Moore of Edina. Hibbing needs a goal to get back in the hockey game. A shot right on goal, the stop by Schwartzbauer on Anderkin. And it's cleared down the ice by Edina. 2-0 the score with one minute, 50 seconds left in the first period. This is Pat Iozo. Iozo on the left side. Up ahead to Anderkin. Anderkin being hounded by Dornbach, but they come in over the line. Pat Meralt working in, shoots! And it hit the side of the net. Many of the fans thought that puck was in. Play continues. Back it comes. Kristoff shot is blocked. Kept in by Hansen. Hansen flips it into the corner. Meralt lost possession back to the point and it comes out over the line and that one had me fooled for a second too it certainly did and hit the far side of the net from this angle right here you weren't certain whether it was in or net the way that uh, net ball there's Anderkin off the post as he almost put it in so Hibbing comes close but the penalty has expired one minute to go in the first period and the Hornets of Edina continue to lead 2 nothing. they're living a charmed life right now after those two opportunities wow Golfs it around the boards. That's Anderkin working his way out. Anderkin hooked from behind by Nanny, and a penalty is upcoming against Adina, so Hibbing will go back on the power play. Unless they score here, they pulled their goaltender, and play whistled down with 34 seconds left in the first period. Well, that penalty was very obvious to him. Marty Nanny getting the stick up and just hooking the man. Sometimes you call those lazy penalties. you got to take the extra two strides and get to the man rather than reach out and get a hooking penalty like that. Hooking is the call against Marty Nanny, who says he wants to play in the 1988 Olympics. What do you think? Well, I'm certain every youngster who plays hockey in the United States and really enjoys the game would look forward to playing in the Olympics, think that that'd be one of their biggest thrills in life. Here comes Grillo for Hibbing. Grillo on the move in the corner, taken to the boards by Belner. Grillo's still with it. Gets some help from Katani. It comes back to the point. Cross ice pass. That's Zezel. His shot deflects high in the air, wide of the goal. Pressure by Hipping. They need a goal with 10 seconds remaining in the first period. Back to the point. Nikolov works his way into the center. Now flips it to the weak side. Behind the net, Zezel for Grillo, and they run out of time. There'll be 127 left on the penalty when we start the second period. But Chris Schwartzbauer and the Adina Hornets 
lead the Hibbing Blue Jackets 2-0 after one period of play. Well, Schwartzbauer had a very strong period when he was tested, and when you're going good, the, pull, the pipe is also your biggest asset, and he needed it a couple of times, Hibbing with some fine shots, notably one by Andrikin, hitting the far pipe on the last power play, keeping his game at 2-0 for Edina, end of one. Willard Eichela has to like his position, but remember, Hibbing knows all about being down 2-0. They scored six straight in their last game. Let's go down to Sports Control and join Ralph John Fritz and Mark Rosen. Okay, thanks, Chris. As you mentioned, uh, Hibbing is a club that has come from behind all year, in fact, in a couple of their games. They got off to that slow start against Apollo yesterday. I think they're going to have to score that next goal, though, because Edina is so hard to play catch-up against. Schwartzbauer has five shutouts in his last six games, and uh, with their team defense concept, it's a little difficult to maintain that. Hibbing did trail 2-0 to Apollo, but they did get that goal right at the end of the period that give them some momentum going in, so they do have problems, although Edina did dodge the bullet late in that period. So let's go down to uh, Tony Parker on the ice right now. Well, you're looking over the bad shoulder of band leader Gary Ward of Edina here. If you want to feel the real excitement of any tournament, any sporting event, of course, get in the band. Hey, you know, guys, I've never been sure. Saxophones are woodwinds or brass. Uh, woodwinds. Wood, 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 brass. Brass. Wood, 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 woodwinds. Wood, they wood, can't decide. What's your name? Uh, Brian. Your instrument? Uh, it's a saxophone. John Montgomery. My name's David. Alto saxophone. You guys play any other band besides the concert band? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. We no play jamming. weddings and bar mitzvahs and things like that yeah. on hire. Oh, yeah, you got to be with the band to get the real feel, let me tell you, because that's where the real excitement is. I mean, it is terrific. There's just nothing like it, believe me. It is that kind of excitement when you're with the band and when the band starts to play. Are you ready, Maestro? Almost. Now back to sports control. I want to hear more, Tony. <laughs> First chair, Tony Parker. Two to nothing, Edina leading Hibbing after one period, but this one is far from over. This is continuing coverage of the 1984 high school hockey tournament. Back at the St. Paul Civic Center, semifinal action. The Dinah's Hornets, two, and the Hibbing Blue Jackets, nothing after one period of play. And, uh, Mark, we should keep in mind and repeat once again that uh, Hibbing will have that power play the first part of that second period. So Chris Schwartzbauer, who has been perfect to this point, uh, could be tested early. And speaking of power plays, Ralph, I think Edina's has been the most effective we have seen in this uh, state high school hockey tournament. They really have a nice team concept. They scored on the power play here. Uh, Tom Terwilliger, this will actually be their third chance on this sequence here. It looked like Ranheim's shot may have gone in. The goal judge did not turn the red light on, however, until Terwilliger finally got it past John Hyduk. Here's another look at it. Number 11 is Ranheim. Hit underneath the crossbar. That puck was in the net. Did not signal until Terwilliger drove it home. But uh, I'm really impressed with the Dynas power play. Greg Dornbach, when he gets on the point, uh, Terwilliger screens out in front, and Hyduke made a big save earlier in the game on a, on a power play. Well, and imagine how uh, Hyduke feels when you have five forwards coming at him. They're actually Terwilliger, a defenseman, but he has been a forward at times. And uh, the second goal for Edina by number 13, Jay Moore, who uh, will always remember this goal, too. He's a sophomore, 5'6", 10th uh, grader, a 2 nothing lead for Edina. That uh, goal came just two or just less than a minute after that uh, first goal took a little starch out of the Blue Jackets well let's face it the Hibbing had their chances there's a pipe shot as uh, Louis Nanny pointed out the goaltender's best friend in this case Chris Schwartzbauer can thank the pipe as Nick Andrickin had a chance there he died and took a couple of penalties near the end of the period in fact as we mentioned Hibbing will have the power play when we begin the second period let's look at the goalie saves in that first period for Chris Schwartzbauer eight a couple of them very difficult ones, but again, the Edina defense is really clearing out uh, the loose pucks in front, and Hibbing has not been able to get to many second chances. Okay, so we're still 2-0 after one period. Edina leading Hibbing, and this is continuing coverage of the 1984 Minnesota High School Hockey Tournament. Edina leading Hibbing by the score of 2-0 at the end of the first period in today's first semifinal game. Uh, catching hockey fever on the iron range, believe me, is a little different than here in the metro area. The symptoms are usually a bit more pronounced and harder to shake. Fortunately, we got to Hibbing just in time to observe a classic case. Like the words from a song of a favorite Hibbing son, the times, they are changing here. But while the economy has slid downward, civic pride has skyrocketed. There's nothing this town likes better than to show off its greatest natural resource, its youth, especially if they happen to be heading for the state high school hockey tournament. 
Symptoms of hockey fever surface days before the actual event. As the final countdown to tournament begins, hectic last-minute preparations keep frantic fans fired up. Here at Hibbing High, there are tickets to be sold, arrangements to be made, and buses to decorate. From team members to cheerleaders, to parents to the whole town, it's tough to remain humble. I'm going to kill, hopefully. I'm going to roll. <laughs> I think it's great. I think they'll do pretty good. They have a good chance. Well, I hope they take the whole thing. Nobody's going to be in school. <laughs> A last-minute practice session has Coach Bill Olson and the team skating with purpose. Cautious jitters and doubts are to be left here on home ice. For tomorrow, it's the beginning of a once-in-a-lifetime experience. We've had a successful year, and we just like to cap it off by doing the best we can. We know the town will be behind us whatever we do. I mean, I'm along with the rest of the guys. It's, it's going to be something we'll probably never forget, you know? so I'm really excited about it. When the day arrives to take that long trip to the big city, the team, parents, and supporters gather at the Hibbing Moose Club for an appreciation breakfast. For all present, it's an emotional time. Expectations are high, and the bond between all becomes even stronger. Hibbing isn't just sending a team to the tournament, it's sending their pride and joy. My husband went home with the tears in his eyes. He's been crying all morning. So he's just sentimental and happy, I guess. They're just a bunch of real gentlemen. They are handling it just terrific. No, it really hasn't gone to their heads. We want the gems now! We want the gems now! We At Hibbing High, hockey fever has reached epidemic proportions. The adrenaline flows. Cheerleaders reach a fever pitch. The band joins in, and the moment has arrived. It's a send-off fit for the right stuff. Let's have everybody there with their loudest voices cheering these guys on. Okay? I'd like to thank everybody for their support. We'll be down there giving 110 percent, and we hope to see you down there giving just as much. Thanks. When there's an outbreak of hockey fever in Hibbing, no one's immune. And the Hibbling Blue Jackets hoping to get on track this second period. They trail Edina 2-0 at this time after one period. Well, each year, the uh, State High School Hockey Tournament produces a number of human interests uh, stories. Last year, we introduced you to Steve Vellner of the Edina Hornets, who came to this tournament but couldn't play. He had open heart surgery. This year, Steve Vellner has returned only under different conditions indeed. Let's watch. When Edina clinched its ticket to the state tournament last weekend, no one celebrated with more intensity than Steve Vellner. Vellner's right. elation is easily understood when you consider the fact that many people doubted he'd be able to play hockey this year. You see, a year ago, Steve Vellner watched this tournament from a wheelchair. Just a week before we shot this interview, Steve had undergone 10 and a half hours of open heart surgery to correct a serious malfunction. But today, he's back on the ice, playing defense for the Hornets. Obviously, Steve Vellner isn't easily discouraged. I knew I'd be skating again. It's just, I was just worried that we wouldn't get back to the tournament. Well, I had a lot of support from our community. We had, the Dinah's got a great support of community people on my team, my friends, everything just kept me going. Steve's parents, Richard and Mary Vellner, also played a key role in their son's rehabilitation. The process that Steve's dad feels was simplified by his son's positive attitude. He's a pretty positive uh, kid, and uh, he, uh, you know, uh, he wants to play hockey, so this was just some little thing that uh, he had to get, get through with. Edina head coach Willard Eichel says Steve's remarkable recovery has been an inspiration to the Hornets this year. He brought back a lot of character as well as his physical ability on the team. He's been a real leader the whole year. Steve Vellner chooses to view the past year as a positive experience, a time in which he learned many invaluable lessons about himself and people in general. There's a lot of good out there. I mean, a lot of people say there's a lot of, there's a lot of bad, but there's a lot of good people out there willing to help you that you've never even heard of before. What a courageous young man, Ralph. Steve Vellner of the Dino Hornets. Talk about your inspirational stories. They don't become more inspirational than that. And every team member on that team just thinks the world of Steve Vellner. This is continuing coverage of the 1984 State High School Hockey Tournament. Well, this first minute could be the most important one for Hibbing. Uh, they're still on the power play, trailing Edina 2-0. They need to capitalize here real soon. 
It certainly is very important for him. As we said last night, you don't like to give up a goal late in the period or early in the period. And he dined it with a man short, Nanny in the penalty box for hooking. Hibbing having the opportunity to close the gap to one goal. Pat Iozo goes to center as the Hibbing Blue Jackets are on the power play. Puck cleared down into Hibbing territory. And this is big Tom Hansen moving out over to Iozo. And Iozo streaks down the line. Iozo tried to cut in. Being watched there by Mendel, drops it back. It's Iozo again. Cross to Hansen. Hansen puts it in front. Iozo there. The shot steered aside by Schwartzbauer. Under a minute left in the penalty to Marty Nanny, and play has been whistled down, and we'll get a face-off outside the blue line as the puck was directed to him with the club. That's one kind of whistle you don't want when you're in the power play. There's no use just moving that puck to your man with the hand because you're going to get a stoppage of play and you're going to lose the face-off. It's coming outside of the opposition zone. Comes outside of the zone like that because Hibbing passed that puck with the hand, and you lose a lot of territory. You've got to work yourself back in the zone. It's much better to just... Lie there, let the man handle it, and hope that one of your teammates can get on him quick enough to check him. Iozo gets the draw, flips it in on the right wing. That's Andrick in there. Andrick in back to Iozo. Now to the point to Jerry Kristoff. He leaves it for Iozo. Into the corner, Andrick in. Marolt is out front. Andrick in tried to come out front. Comes back to Kristoff as Andrick in knocked down. Here's a shot, is blocked. Kristoff again, and his shot doesn't get through, and Adina breaks out. A long lead pass. As the Hornets come down ice, Dornbach along with Hatch, and that is broken up. So it comes to Nick Andrikin. Andrikin lost the puck in front, and he took a swing at Dornbach, who's doing a great job of forechecking. Just 10 seconds now left in the penalty to Nanny. Time for one more rush. This is Iozo down ice. Iozo. Taken to the boards by Terwilliger. Dornbach is there. They try to clear it. It comes out, and Nanny had the puck slide behind him. He was heading for the bench, and the puck slid down ice behind him. Here's Nanny falling behind the net, and Hansen picks it up, but play has been whistled down. Well, the coach tells you to skate right to the bench, and that's what he did, and that time the puck was iced right behind him. Well, he's got to go back to the zone to play the puck before he gets the opportunity in high school hockey, and that's why he was offside. He should have just left it, not even gone for it, and allowed the goaltender to play it because that's an offside play. And uh, first he let it go, then he goes back to the play. There's no use going back for it. 13-24 left in the second period. It's 2-0 for the Adina Hornets. Puck slides down into Blue Jacket territory. Mikolov around the boards, broken up. Here's a pass in front. Hankinson just rolled it wide. Puck comes back to the point for Chris Bonvino. Bonvino across ice to Williger. Fan on the shot. Grillo steals it. It comes to Catani down ice. Catani centers it out in front, and Hankinson was there. Up to Marty Nanny. On his wrong wing, Nanny checked from behind. The puck slides into Hibbing territory. After it is Kaler. Kaler can't get control of the puck, and Hibbing shoots it out to center. Mendel across for Velder, broken up by Katani, who couldn't get control of it. And Adina just knocks it down ice, and this slides past Richie Bryant. Bryant over to Bo Nikoloff. Nikoloff sends it forward. Katani can't take the pass. And it's shot ahead to Kaler. Check that Dave Sarp now. Sarp is out. He is taken to the boards, and play whistle down. There's a break in the action, and we'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Twelve seventeen left in the second period. 2 nothing in Dinah as Steve Veldner shoots it down ice. John Hyduke stopped it behind the goal, kept in by Ranheim. Ranheim fires it back into the corner. After it is Craig Shepard. Shepard drops it back to Steve Veldner. Veldner knocks it around the boards in behind the net Bill Mork working for it Mork to the boards and he loses control Belner shot right in front and Mork deflects it wide Mork takes his man to the boards Ranheim is in after it and finally Hipping gets control they can't clear the zone however puck in front it's loose and it's whistled down as the puck slid into the net but play had been called 
And the faceoff will come outside. He figured he played it ahead with his hand. Faceoff outside. And Hyduke just relaxing on his net, knowing the play meant nothing, even though the puck ends up behind you. If the whistle blows, it doesn't count. You see Coach Bill Olsen trying to get his players up, telling them to keep playing the way you played in the first period. You had a great deal of spark. You were forechecking well. You were moving the puck. You got a lot of time left in this hockey game. Don't stop now. Bill Olsen said if, if his team does have problems with anything, it's getting too emotional. I find that surprising in a state tournament. All the other teams certainly get emotional. This is a very composed crew, and maybe that's why they play better and better as the game wears on. Here's Greg Dornbach. For Adina, his pass for Mullen is broken up, and Tom Hansen takes over. Good-looking defenseman. Hansen, a right-wing pass for Grillo, goes too far. Cleared around the boards by Bonvino, kept in at the point, a shot in front, and Anderkin was standing there and couldn't deflect it in behind Schwartzbauer. Mullen has trouble with it as Hipping starts to forecheck. Moralt, Moralt falls as he lost control, and Dornbach starts back. Here's a three-on-two. Jerry Mullen steps over the line with Dornbach. Back to Mullen. Mullen centers it, and Hansen recovered and knocks the puck around the boards. Tom to Williger. Knocks it into the corner, and finally up with it is Jerry Kristoff. And he dumps it out to center. Here's a break for Andrikin. Andrikin behind Bonvino shooting, and Schwartzbauer makes the save. A good save by Schwartzbauer on Andrikin coming in all alone, who's behind Bonvino. Schwartzbauer just cut that angle off, stayed in his ground, didn't give him anything to shoot at. There's a break in the action. We'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. You see Andrikin coming in from the side. Well, look at Schwartzbauer standing right there, not coming out too far, but far enough to give him no angle at all, making the save. The way And Andrikin's played lately, he must believe he can't let anything in. He's just playing brilliant hockey, but now Hibbing with pressure. A shot from the point is knocked down, and Mendel knocks it down ice. So the Blue Jackets with pressure there. Nikolov behind his net, taken to the boards. A centering pass goes off the mesh, and play is whistled down once again. Well, Hibbing, whenever they get the puck behind the net, when they're getting a little pressure on them, Edina coming with wings from both sides. They're going to have to move that puck quickly, otherwise they're going to get trapped back there. From the faceoff, Hankinson went after it, but it comes out to center. Clojo just missed the lead pass. And it's cleared back into Blue Jacket territory. Richie Bryant with it around the boards. Clojo lets it go, and here come the Blue Jackets. The puck shot down ice by Katani. Taken to the boards is Belner, and he may be slow to get up. Steve Belner went crashing into the boards, and he's shaken up a bit. Seemed like he might have hurt his arm a little bit. His leg, he lost his balance as he was going back. He was trying to lean in to get the puck, get position, uh, possession of the puck, and move. He just wasn't able to do it without losing his balance. With the score, Adina 2 and Hibbing nothing. This is Hockey 84, live from the St. Paul Civic Center. You'll see Velner right here. He knows he's got a man on him. He's trying to lean in to protect the puck with his body at the same time get possession of the puck. He just leaned in a little too far, lost his balance, ran into the net. You see him, or into the boards. You see him on the bench right now, just favoring his arm a little bit, but I feel he's going to be okay. Goals 37 seconds apart in the first period by Tom Terwilliger and Jay Moore have a dynon up on top by a score of 2-0. Here's Mike Vidmar against the boards, keeping it in for Hibbing, and now it's shot out to center. And play whistled down as the puck was knocked down with a high stick. And it will come back into Blue Jacket territory. In high school hockey, they bring the puck all the way back down into your own zone. And right now, Hibbing's going to have a face-off to their right of goaltender Hajduki. Fourth line for Hibbing out. Kelly Este along with John Schwartz and Pat Gazich. Schwartz had a goal in the victory over St. Cloud Apollo yesterday. Puck back to the point for Heinrich, and he can't keep it in. Now it's shot back in the zone, a delayed offside upcoming, and it's whistled down. 
Well, it's much better to put that puck back in the zone when you're being pressured like that as a defenseman. The pass comes back to you slowly. One of the hitting forwards right out on top of Heinrich. He might as well put that puck back in the zone. The worst that can happen is you get a delayed offside or an immediate offside. At least you get a faceoff rather than having the puck stolen from you. Jay Moore at center for Adina, and they fire it right in. Jeff Johnson knocking it down ice, and Tom Hansen has it for the Blue Jackets. Hibbing working their way out of the zone, flipping it to center, but Heinrich knocks it right back in. This is Jerry Kristoff around the boards on the right wing. John Hagen has it there, leaves it for Kasner. Kasner knocks it into the zone. Going after it is Hagen, beaten to the puck by Adina, and here comes Dave Sarp. Sarp and Moore are broken up, and back in comes Hansen. His pass broken up. Hansen gets it again on the backhand, out in front. And a big play by Tom Hansen, keeping that puck in, making a fake, bringing the puck to the middle as he draws everyone over to him to give it to Kojo. Kojo on a backhand shot through his screen. Schwartzbauer not having an opportunity to see that puck very well. Has it go by him. As we see him, he cut the margin to one. Here's the puck kept in by Hansen. He moves to the middle now. Backhand pass to Kojo, who's cut across the middle. And as Schwartzbauer is leaning to his left, going with Kojo. Here's the puck right here, stolen by Hansen, back to Klojo. And look at Schwartzbauer lean to his left. At that moment, Klojo with the backhand shot, put it by him on the near side. Right there. And Hibby trailing by one. Two to one, Edina. In some ways, an unusual goal. The pass was a backhand, and the shot was a backhand. He might have even deflected off someone in front of the team to change directions there. There's so many bodies in front of him. Six minutes, 21 seconds, time of the goal. Clojo, Hanson, and Kristoff get assists. Let's see how that affects the momentum for the Hibbing Blue Jackets. They trail 2-1, to one, the puck in Adina territory. Steve Elder back on the ice. Mendel takes a hit as he was sandwiched against the boards, but Adina manages to get it outside the blue line. But you can see Hibbing has picked up. Here's Iozo in. Back pass for Anderkin just failed to get through. Iozo from the corner out in front. Tried to chop at the puck with one hand on the stick. Bill Mork trying to clear the zone. Can't do it as Hibbing keeps it in. A second try by the Hornets, and finally they get it to center. They got too many men on the ice, and they're going to be called for it. Hibbing player was jumping on for a line change. The fellow going off saw the puck, decided to play the puck, and they had six men on the ice. Maybe they had too much emotion that time. They were putting on a great deal of pressure. With the score, Adina 2, Hibbing 1. This is Hockey 84. Fourteen Blue from the is serving Paul a minor penalty, bench penalty, for too many men on the ice. And there is Pat Merold serving the too many men on the ice penalty that Hibbing was just assessed. Adina on the power play. The momentum had just gone behind Hibbing. Let's see what Adina can do with the man advantage. The pass for Dornbach. He knifes it into the zone. Chasing after it is Jerry Mullen. Along with Terwilliger. And they tie it up behind the goal for a faceoff. The rule of thumb you use with too many men on the ice is when a player is coming off the ice and his man is it's replacing him and has hit the ice, the man going off the ice does not touch the puck. If he touches a puck, he's going to be playing, called immediately for too many men on the ice. That's what happened in this instance. Catani and Zezel up front to kill the penalty for the Blue Jackets. From the faceoff, it comes back to Andy Hatch. Cross-ice pass. This is Ranheim. Ranheim sneaking down that left side. Dornbach fills at the blue line. The puck comes back to Dornbach. His pass for Hatch, and Catani got his stick on it. Andy Hatch. Cross-ice pass again for Ranheim. 121 left in the power play advantage for Adina. Very tentative as they set it up to Dornbach. They want to hit Hatch here, 18. Play, playing a triangle, as you can see. They feed it across for Hatch. It goes into the corner. Hatch moves in. That's to Williger with the puck. Hatch is taken down, or did he take somebody down? There's a shot. They score, but I don't think this will count. Let's yeah, well, it was, it, will. it was a delayed penalty being called against Hibbing. Hibbing was going to get another 
a penalty called against him for interference down in front of the net. But at that moment, the puck went across to Ranheim, a fine pass, an excellent shot. He released it immediately, beating Hajduk. You see down by Hajduk's 11, left, 15, and 5 assists. The penalty right here is going to be called as Hatch got cross-checked in the mouth as he was down. But now the pass comes across from Twilliger. Twilliger gives it to Ranheim, who shoots it immediately, beating Hajduk. Should read Hatch and Twilliger on the assist. Ranheim the goal. He dined up three to one. Well, a big goal for Adina. 6:44 left in the second period. So Adina capitalizing on the power play again. Very deadly power play when they get that puck over to Hatch or Ranheim on the side. The way they release it so quickly. Here's Pat Ioso. A lead pass for Nick Andrick and his Hibbing tries to get. Back within one, Andrickson just couldn't get a shot away. To Williger in the corner. Tom to Williger. Out on this right side. And the pass comes to Hankinson. Hankinson ahead for Kaler. Jerry Kaler tried the backhand pass, and that was intercepted. Now Hankinson follows up. Here's Kaler. Can he get a shot away? Kaler has the puck slide off his stick to the corner. He goes to the boards. Moving in is Hankinson. Back to the point for Bob Mendel. Mendel. Back in and around the boards as Adina goes right back on the attack, leading 3-1 with six minutes to play in the second period. Manny now for checking, takes down his man, Hankinson there. The Hornets bottling up the Blue Jackets, and finally the puck comes out to center. Mendel clears it right back in. Going back to get it is Bo Nikolov. Around the boards, and there's a tremendous hit by Bonvino. Shaken up a bit on the play is Andrikin. A lead pass for Iozo is broken up, and Bonvino fires it right back in. That Bonvino can really dish out the body check. Here's a puck right over foot. They score! So Adina has opened up the floodgates and leads 4-1. Well, some strong four checking behind the net, getting that puck out front to Nanny. Nanny standing all alone in the slot area. Released it quickly, putting Adina up 4-1. That third line continues to come through big for the Hornets. Well, you see the play right here. Ranheim working hard behind in that center and in very quickly to Nanny standing all alone in front. He just lets fly down low on Hajduk's left, put it by Hajduk. And an excellent play right there by Ranheim, maintaining composure to get the puck after he spun knocked down. He fights hard for it, loses balance. Look at this. He still gets that puck away right out front to Nanny and beats Hajduk on the far side. his second goal of the tournament. Ranheim had two goals and an assist yesterday. He has a goal and two assists today. And the Hornets lead 4-1. Here comes Adina back on the attack again. Shepard in front for Mork, and he just couldn't get his shot away. So the Blue Jackets have to come from behind. Kasner on the right side to Hagen. Back to Kasner shooting wide. Hagen in front. And it went over the stick of Clojo. Now the Blue Jackets coming to the attack. Clojo fighting for it in the corner, but the puck comes loose, and here comes Ranheim. Clearing it into Hibbing territory and heading for the bench for a line change. Clojo up ahead for Kasner. That's broken up. Back in comes Mullen. He couldn't get loose. Mullen steals the puck. He'll try it again. Can't get by Vidmar, and the Blue Jackets knock it down the ice, and they make a line change. Four minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the second period. 4-1, Adina over Hibbing. Here's Katani knocking it in over the line, and Tom Terwilliger, the big defenseman for the Hornets, back to get it. He's taken to the boards. Puck comes to the point. Kristoff puts it into the slot area, and it's intercepted by the Hornets there, and knocked into the corner where Hendrick will take over. Heinrich loses control of it. Out on the right side, given away by Mullen. Mullen gets it again, and this time he'll carry it out of the zone. Mullen ahead to Dornbach, over the line. Dornbach racing right in, shooting, and he hit the goal post. What an effort by Dornbach, cut through the defense and getting a good shot away. There's a shot at the other end by Katani, and Schwartzbauer will hold on. There's a break in the action. We'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Play 
underway with three and a half minutes to go in the second period. 4-1, Adina leading Hibbing. Paul Ranheim has a goal and two assists. He's the leading scorer of the tournament with three goals and three assists. In the center zone, the Blue Jackets fire it down ice, and Chris Bonvino is back to get it. He's bumped, but gets it ahead, and here comes little Jay Moore, who scored in the first period. Moore can't get loose, and it's knocked back down into Adina territory. Kept in at the line by the Blue Jackets. John Zizzle is there. He tried to kick it forward. Now trying to come in over the line is Nikolov. Nikolov trying to cut around the defenseman. Centers it out in front. Schwartzbauer can't clear it. There's a shot. Schwartzbauer the save and the rebound is knocked to the corner. Close call there and Schwartzbauer continues to shine. Schwartzbauer making an outstanding save. He'd been putting on all kinds of pressure. Just got thwarted again. They've had two great chances in the last two minutes. The first one by Claudio on the open net. He's going to be dreaming about that one for a while. Now Adina knocks it down ice, and that's icing with 2.16 remaining in period number two. Well, Schwartzbauer was left all alone, and he had to beat the shooter in that one, and he came up big again. Schwartzbauer has been very, very strong throughout this tournament whenever he was tested, and especially today, because Hibbing keeps coming after you. They never quit. They've got excellent speed up front. They're tenacious. They work hard for that puck, and when they get it around the net, they're dangerous. Iozo on the draw. It comes loose. Meralt just put it wide of the goal. That was a dangerous shot by Meralt right off the faceoff. Now it comes back down ice. Hankins had taken off the puck. And Jerry Kristoff. The big Gazich. Gazich on the wing. He goes to the boards. Manny in for checking. Has the puck. Tried to center it. And the Blue Jackets take over and knock it out to center ice. This is Andrikin stepping over the line with Iozo. Iozo is after it. Loose puck. Meralt follows up, overskated it. And Hankinson takes over. A lead pass to Jerry Kaler. Here's Kaler over the line. Andy trying to catch up. Kaler behind the net. Centers it out in front. It's loose. Hyduk trying to jump on it. And finally, play whistle down. And you can see the puck in the back of the net. But play had been called. Well, so once the referee loses sight of the puck, he's right to blow that whistle. He's got to blow the whistle immediately because he can't allow people to stand around the goaltender and keep jabbing at her, hoping to get free. You see Kaler coming wide. He looks back. He's looking for Nanny to give it to. Nanny coming late, so Kaler decides to go around the net, tries to center to him. As it does, it gets deflected. Now it's down in a melee between Hyduke, Nanny, and Hankinson, and Merolt right there. And finally, the referee blows the whistle. It was down there for quite some time. Another reason the goal was disallowed is because the hand. it was gloved in. That's one way to get it over the red line. You didn't see anybody shooting the stick with him. <laughs> That's for sure. Right? A minute 23 left in the second period. It is 4 to 1. Adina leading Hibbing. Craig Shepard trying to knock the puck loose, but it is frozen for a faceoff. As John Hagen fell on the puck. Well, Hibbing scored five times in the third period yesterday, but. It will be tough to do so against the Dyna today. Of course, they only need three to tie. And they're not fish for this period yet. They've still got time to get a goal to get something busted up here. Tom Hansen behind the net. Puck centered out in front. Haidu has to jump on the loose puck. The Dyna centering that puck blindly sometimes right in front. And if they're not careful, somebody can pick it off and catch a couple forwards deep. If you have nothing to do with it and you don't know if anyone's open, you might as well just keep moving along behind the net until you spot someone open. At this stage of the game, when there's only a minute left to go in the period, don't blind pass anything out front because you might be putting the opposition on a three-on-two break. There you see John Hyduke, who wants to be a dentist when his hockey career is all over. I had the same thoughts. That's how I ended up in Minnesota. But these hands don't work of mine. <laughs> Here's Hibbing looking for a late goal that might inspire them in the third period, but the puck cleared out to center, and Bill Mork has it for Edina. Mork can't get over the line, and back come the Blue Jackets once again. This is Clojo fanning on the shot. Katani behind the net. Katani has it once again, trying to backhand it in front, but he is checked. And Tom Tewilliger takes over. Tewilliger knocks it into the neutral zone with under 30 seconds to play in the period. Hibbing firing right back in. The Hornets don't want to make any mistakes in their defensive zone at this point. 
Here's Nikolov keeping it in. He works his way in. Drops the pass for Katani. Katani works it back to the point. Here comes the shot. Bryant and Schwartzbauer made the save. So Williger trying to clear the zone. Three seconds left. And Hibbing's going to run out of time. So a good period for the Adina Hornets as they head to the dressing rooms after 40 minutes of play, leading by the score of 4-1. Well, it's always better to go in the dressing room with a lead, but that last minute of play, they allowed Hibbing to have some opportunity. Dinah getting a little casual, a little complacent in their own zone, going by people with the puck, just reaching for the puck rather than taking the man. When you do that, you're going to give the other team a lot of opportunities. Let's go down to Sports Control and join Ralph John Fritz and Mark Rosen. Well, you just can't afford to let Dinah get on that power play. They are just awesome. That too many men in the ice penalty. Uh, for Hibbing really cost him because Paul Ranheim, who has been certainly one of the big stars in this tournament, came through with the goal that put him ahead 3-1. to one. Marty Nanny with the big fourth goal, so Hibbing's got a lot of work cut off for him in that third period. I thought when Jeff Klosho uh, did score for Hibbing, I thought uh, that deflated Edina a little bit, but they came right back and got the two quick goals. Good balance on Edina this year. That has been their key all year, and something uh, about being under the bright lights at the St. Paul Civic Center during this tournament has got all those guys jacked up right now because they're all four lines, in fact, are flying for the Hornets right now. It's really turned them on, so it's 4-1 uh, now. The elite for Edina and uh, Hibbing really with a monumental task to come uh, back, especially with the defense of Edina and the fact that Chris uh, Schwartzbauer has played so well the last five or six games. Well, according to our, our statistics, Ralph, uh, uh, Edina has never lost a semifinal game in 15 previous appearances, so they have history going on their side also. Tom Hanneman is ready with his special guest. Tom? A special guest indeed, Mark. The man uh, that I certainly associate Hibbing Hockey with, George Perpich, who was coach of Hibbing uh, for 29 years, from 1953 to 1982. Uh, George, uh, to begin with, your thoughts on the game so far? Well, uh, Hibbing's having a lot of problems. I hope they can... They're usually good in the third period. I hope they can come around in the third period. You had over 400 uh, wins in your career. Do you find it uh, difficult sitting in the stands watching games these days as opposed to the bench? Well, you kind of miss it. You miss the kids and all the excitement. You get older, it's kind of hard to keep up interest and enthusiasm, but I still love it, especially high school athletics. Well, I've been watching you at the end of the uh, second period here, and it appears to me you've got a lot of enthusiasm left for the uh, well, my, hockey team. Uh, this is one of the first years I haven't had a boy playing. I've had four boys, and they all played, and that kind of kept you going, too. And my wife said that I'm still uh, kind of wild up there. She doesn't want to sit with me. <laughs> all right, George, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us. Thanks a lot, Tom. Back to Sports Control. Okay, Tom, I was up at Hibbing last week watching your sectional final. George Purpose was, was up in the stands, which is an unusual role for him. He was just a nervous wreck up there. <laughs> Can't I guess, get it out of your blood. I guess hockey wives have no, they're no, really no difference from hockey moms, are they? No, not. Okay, it's 4-1 to one for Edina over Hibbing after two periods of play. This is continuing coverage of the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Back at the St. Paul Civic Center, Ralph John Fritz with Mark Rosen. We have a 4-1 score. Edina is leading Hibbing, the number one team in the state, uh, for most of the year after two periods of play here. And uh, Mark, of course, the winner goes on to play either Kennedy or Johnson tomorrow night in the championship game. It looked as though Hibbing was coming back that uh, second period. Well, give credit to number two, their outstanding slick junior defenseman Tom Hansen for setting up uh, their first goal and the only goal scored against Edina so far in this tournament. Hansen with a nifty backhand pass over to Jeff Clojo, who would turn lifted another backhand shot over Schwartzbauer. Here's another look at it. Hanson, uh, when I was up in Hibbing last week, Mike Sertich, the coach of Duluth, was already looking at this young man. Closure with the backhand over Schwartzbauer, who is not in position to make the save, which is a, has been a rare commodity so far. There are those in hockey who say the backhand is a lazy man's pass. Two in a row here. Well, also, I think if you talk to a goalkeeper, he'll tell you it's the toughest shot to stop because you never know what direction it's going to take. But with the curved stick these days, it's difficult to perfect. Well, for Edina, we've heard a lot of the names of Tom Terwilliger and Paul Ranheim, and they combine here. Number 15 is Terwilliger to number 11, Paul Ranheim, and he jams at home. Ranheim, one of the uh, top players in the state, makes it 3-1 to one for the Edina Hornets. Was impressed all in one motion there. Ranheim did not hesitate, and that's why uh, Hyduk never got in position to stop it. And here's Ranheim again. Tenacity behind the net. Centering the pass to Marty Nanny, who sli slides it past High Duke before he gets flattened in front of the net. But again, Paul Ranheim on his knees making the play to Marty Nanny, the junior winger, and he slaps it home. Louie could have knocked that one in. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> 
But nonetheless, it gives the Edina Hornets a 4-1 to one lead, Nanny's second goal of this tournament. Not many teams, I don't think, in the state would be capable of coming back from three goals to beat Edina. Hibbing may be one of the few. They do have an explosive team, but it's still going to be a very, very difficult task for them. It's going to be a tall mountain to climb. It is 4-1 to one Edina over Hibbing after two, and this is continuing coverage of the 1984 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. live at the St. Paul Civic Center about to begin the third period of play. But before we do, I wanted to turn around and ask Lou Nanny a question. Now, late in that uh, second period, before Paul Ranheim scored the goal to make it 3-1, to one, there was a man in the penalty box for Hibbing. A delayed penalty was called on Hibbing. The goal went in. The man obviously comes out of the penalty box. But why wasn't the delayed penalty then called and that man forced to go in the penalty box? Well, that rule is not unique to high school hockey. It's a professional rule also. As a matter of fact, we had some discussion about it this year. Some of us like to change that rule because, in effect, you're, you're wiping out two penalties. But the way it is now, a delayed penalty call, maybe the thinking is you have the opportunity to pull your goaltender and add a sixth attacker. So that, in effect, is wiping out the one delayed penalty, and you're scoring on a power play advantage already. That, in effect, wipes out the other. But uh, when you look at it, many times you don't even get that goaltender out. You might score a goal, and you do wipe out both. That's the way the rule reads. It's not only uh, in high school hockey, it's in international hockey, it's in professional hockey. Lou, that was a critical penalty taken by Hibbing. Uh, too many men on the ice, it's come back to haunt so many coaches, and the Blue Jackets were gaining momentum, and all of a sudden, the penalty hurt them. Well, Chris, if you remember back to the Stanley <laughs> Cup 7 game of the finals, Boston winning with two minutes to go, and they got called with too many men in the ice. Lafleur ties the game with Canadians winning overtime, and that cost them the Stanley Cup. That could be the most talked about minor penalty in Stanley Cup history. Don Cherry sure talks about it. Well, when you lose a cup like that, I'm sure you'd you'd think about it for a long time. We're ready to start the third period of play. Hipping trailing a Dyna by three, and they need another big third period surge like we saw yesterday when they scored five against St. Cloud Apollo. Bill Moore clears it ahead to Paul Ranheim. What an afternoon he's had. Here comes Ranheim on the right side, too far for Shepard. Shepard drops it back for Ranheim in front for Mork. That's knocked down. It's stolen in front. Loose puck here is Ranheim again. The shot that Haidu makes the save and holds on. Well, Ranheim using Mork for a screen was very, very strong on the puck in front of the net. As he gets it, he spins around. Mork went to the net trying to screen Haidu. Ranheim spun around, got the shot on net, but the save was made. Antonio Catani with Mike Grillo and John Zezel. And from the faceoff, it comes back to the right point and cleared into the corner by Adina. They're looking for more despite leading by three. Long pass by Richie Bryant down ice too far. Back to get it is Bombino. Knocks it around the boards. Catani knocked it in front, and Schwartzbauer has to hang on. I was going to say, Chris, that's what Edina has to do. They can't lay back. They lay back against a team like Hibbing, great scoring power they have, and they've got a lot of balance. They're going to be in some problems. You've got to go after the team when you're ahead of them, try and keep them down, try and create some opportunities for yourself. You might get your, your own team uh, increasing its lead. We should mention that tonight, Burnsville meets Hill Murray in a consolation game, and it's Johnson and Kennedy in the other semifinal. Steve Bellner behind his net. He's back. You saw him shaken up in that second period, but is back taking a regular shift. Dornbach helping out, and it's Bellner with Dornbach. They can't clear the zone. And now Hibbing starting to forecheck. Mike Grillo overskates the puck, and turning away is Dornbach as he clears it out to center. And now the puck flipped out over the glass and out of play. There's a break in the action, and we'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Thirteen forty-eight left in regulation time. The Hornets of Edina leading the Hibbing Blue Jackets 4-1. Sean Gostad knocks it down ice for Hibbing. Elmer back to get it around the boards. And it's Andy Hatch. Hatch can't clear the zone. And picking up the loose puck is Mendel. Around the boards for Belner, and this time it's Adina getting all tied up. And now they break out. And it's Jerry Mullen down the right side. Mullen over the line. Passes it across ice and high do. Let it go through the goal crease and into the corner. 
Gostad around the boards on the far side for Clojo, who has a goal. That comes back once again. Bitmar falls behind the net. Puck is loose, and Bitmar gets it once again. Clojo off the boards, out to center. This is Mark Kasner, who clears it down into Adina territory, and the Blue Jackets make a line change. John Schwartz is forechecking, but out come the Hornets. A lead pass at center going after the puck is Kaler. It's too far, and Tom Hansen is there. A lead pass for Andrikin. Here's Nick Andrikin stepping over the line. Andrikin working his way in, and he is checked. After it is Pat Iozo. Iozo keeps it in the zone. He is bodied against the boards. Now Andrikin steps into a man. Marot put it in front, and it was cleared away. Still a very dangerous line. Iozo, Andrikin, and Moralt. This is Iozo turning once again. He is checked, and the puck is flipped out to center. Tom Hansen fires it in right on Schwartzbauer, and Belner is there. What a thrill it has to be for Belner playing in the tournament this year. It certainly is, Chris. Last year he watched it, and he was really upset, but he's made a big comeback, as we've shown on TV earlier. Iozo clears it into the zone. He heads to the bench. Four checking is Moralt, and Tom Tewilliger takes over. His pass fails to get outside the line, knocked back in by Zezel. And here's Jerry Kaler with a lot of open ice, but Kaler's just going to knock it down into the hibbing zone and head for the bench. Turning with the puck is Bo Nikoloff ahead to Katani. Katani on the left side, it's Mike Grillo. There's a shot right on goal. Schwartzbauer, the save, rebound went off the side of the net. They battle away for it, chipped out in front. And Adina takes over. So Hibbing has not said die yet. There's a lead pass in the center ice zone for Ranheim, which just failed to click. Bill Mork up with it. He is checked. And now the pass for Katani. Katani to Grillo. Grillo over the line. On the backhand, his shot goes high off the glass. Here's Grillo with it again. Tried to leave it for Katani, who was checked. Puck in the corner. Adana would like a faceoff. Katani gets it loose. Katani trying to work his way out in front. Grillo helping out. Puck knocked into the corner. And it's Ranheim for Mork. Mork sidesteps a check. Can't clear the zone. Here come Hibbing once again. Katani in the corner. Centers it out in front. The puck batted down with a high stick as Bryant tried to golf it in unsuccessfully. There's a break in the action. We'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Hibbing has certainly come after Edina this period, putting on tremendous pressure. Edina a little sloppy around their own blue line, not making sure of getting that puck out when they got the opportunity to do so. Line of Kasner, Schwartz, and Clojo now out for the Blue Jackets. Ten minutes, 20 seconds left. There's a shot from the point that failed to get through. The rebound batted out at the side of the net, goes into the corner. Moving up is Gostad. But the Hornets will move it out of the zone and down ice. And here's a two-on-one. Mullen and Hatch. Mullen trying to get it across. And a fine defensive play by Mike Vidmar. But the loose puck in front for Hatch. There's the shot, and it just went wide. Close call there for the Hornets. 9.57 remaining in regulation time. It's still 4-1. Well, Hatch getting the puck on a giveaway, and he was on his backhand. He had his back to the net. He spun around. He knew that Mullen was coming out of the corner, just hoping to put that shot on net. It came close to the net. Mullen deflected, just went by. But that's been Edina's only attempt at a threat since the first time in this period when Ranheim came down the ice with the puck. Lou, under 10 minutes to go. Is this the time when Bill Olsen says we've got to go with our best two lines? Well, he's got a lot of balance on all three lines. I don't think he has to sit back with two because you don't know where those goals are going to come from when you've got the capabilities that some of these fellows have out there. Hankinson overskates the puck. The shot in from the point off the stick of Kristoff knocked down. Still in the zone. Going after, after it is Andrikin. Andrikin in the corner fighting for possession. But the Hornets come up with it, and a long lead pass for Kaler was broken up. This is Hansen working his way back in. Let's see if he can cut in. Hansen trying to center it. A good defensive job by Pete Hankins in the center. And you like to see your forwards play that well defensively. Well, he does that all the time. He's a very, very intelligent centerman, not only with the puck, without the puck. He's an excellent checker. He's tenacious. He's quick on the puck. 
and once more you look at a small man he's not that big a fella but being small he still has the capabilities of riding big people off the puck because he's got such good balance he's only 5'8 150 he's going to get a lot bigger because his dad's a big man sophomore he'll be around for a dino for the next couple of years excellent talent Puck cleared down into Hibbing territory. Going after it is Jay Moore, who has played well on the fourth line for the Hornets. There's a great hit by Jeff Johnson. Now Johnson falls, and the puck is cleared outside the line. Katani just got rid of it. And now Nikolov will try his luck. Nikolov, a hit for Katani at the line, and the Hornets lining up along the blue line stop that Hibbing attack. There's a break in the action, and we'll be right back with the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Tom Tewilliger, Jay Moore, Paul Ranheim, and Marty Nanny have scored goals for Edina. Jeff Plojo has scored for Hibbing. It's 4-1 Hornets lead with eight and a half minutes to play in regulation time. Over the dot line comes Kasner. He is checked, and the Hornets dump it out to center ice. Puck cleared to the blue line, and now knocked down ice by Terwilliger. This is Mike Vidmar with it. He banks it off the boards, and it's back to Terwilliger. Ahead to Johnson. Johnson clears it into the zone. And heads for the bench. Another line change for Willard Eichel's club. Vidmar. Up ahead to Schwartz. He knocks it down into Medina territory. And back to get it is Heinrich. Heinrich can't clear it. There's a puck out in front. And Schwartzbauer wisely hangs on for a face-up. Well, Schwartzbauer just leaning for that puck. He actually was going to play it momentarily. But then he saw Bonfino wasn't in position to get the puck. Bonfino was taking a man, which he should do, not allowing him to come for a free puck. And Schwartzbauer wisely falls in giving the face off to his right. Edina still not coming up clean with that puck coming out of the zone. They're allowing too many pucks to come around the boards and not getting control of it. The wings have to be a little stronger and a little more diligent so they can tip it out. Here's Bill Mork backhanding it but failing to clear the zone. It was kept in by Kristoff. Kristoff at the line keeps it in again. Bodies a man and finally it comes outside the blue line but it's carried back in by Iozo the shot and Schwartzbauer with a great glove save. Well, that's the kind of play we're talking about. Hibbing continuing to steal the puck right at the blue line. Right here, Iozo steals it, comes over the blue line. Let's fly with a good slap shot from 45 feet. And Schwartzbauer just reaches up and picks it out of the air. Edina must get better on that blue line. They're going to pay for it pretty soon. Puck steered aside by Schwartzbauer. Andriken behind the net. Iozo is standing out in front. Moralt tried to get him the puck. Andriken drops it back to the point. There's a shot. It hit the outside of the goal post. Andriken tries to center again this time. Ranheim comes up with it to Craig Shepard. Shepard, a long lead pass for Mork too far. It slides down into Hibbing territory. And getting back first was Jerry Kristoff. To Tom Hansen. Long lead pass for Andriken failed to click. Andriken gets it back again over the line offside. And Iozo a little unhappy with the call. With the score, Edina 4, Hibbing 1. This is Hockey 84, live from the St. Paul Civic Center. Six minutes, 58 seconds remaining in regulation time. 4-1, Hornets lead. This is Mike Grillo battling with Tewilliger in the corner. Puck cleared ahead. Andy Hatch can't clear the zone, and a shot goes wide off the stick of Antonio Catani. Now it's Heinrich. He just gets rid of it, and you can see the Hornets are having some trouble in their own zone right now as Hibbing presses to the attack to get back in the hockey game. Grillo behind the net. Tried to leave it for Catani, and here come the Hornets out to center. Heinrich knocks it into the Hibbing zone, and up with it is Nikolov. Ahead to Catani for Grillo. Grillo missed the pass. Zezel goes after it, and he knocks it in against Schwartzbauer. And now Schwartzbauer hangs on for a face-off because I think he senses 
that the Hornets are having trouble in their own zone. I'm sure he does. The Hornets are having a great deal of trouble in their own zone. I don't think that puck's been down in the Hibbing zone this period for over 30 seconds in total since we've begun. Hibbing putting on all kinds of pressure just through some strong forechecking and sloppiness on Edina's part around the blue line when the forward should be just getting that puck out, making sure it's out of the zone. Kasner on the draw for Hibbing, but he lost it, and Kaler moves it down ice for the Edina Hornets. Here's Vidmar fighting for the puck with Hankins, and then Hankins it is tenacious. As you can see, forechecking. Now comes around the boards, and Jeff Clojo, who has the lone goal for the Blue Jackets, to the line and over. Clojo left it for Kasner. That was broken up. Now on this near side, John Schwartz has possession. Schwartz bumped off the puck, but Kasner has it out in front for the goal crease. Knocked off the boards by Mendel, but kept in at the line by Gostad. So again, Hibbing taking the play to Adina. Finally cleared out to the center ice zone and down ice by the Hornets. Five minutes, 15 seconds remaining as Kaler backhands it into the zone. Gostad with the puck for Mike Vidmar. And now they move it ahead to John Schwartz. A lead pass for Andrikin, who is back on the ice. He'll see a great deal of ice time in this last five minutes. Bill Mork off the boards, kept in at the line by Kristoff, and now turning with the puck is Ranheim. Ranheim over the line, big shot, the save by Haidu. Ranheim gets the rebound, looking to center, out in front, cleared away, and Iozo starts back the other way. Pat Iozo over the line, taking on two players for Edina, and he's taken to the boards. Behind the net, Moralt trying to center. Andrikin is there. Andrikin tried to put it in front, and he was checked. By Twilliger, and what a game Twilliger's playing. He played a solid one yesterday. One of the best players on the ice yesterday, and again today for Edina on defense. Moralt shot, steered aside by Schwartzbauer. And now out at center ice, this is Andy Hatch. Hatch moving in over the line. Across it goes. There's a shot by Mullen, and a great save by Haidu. Mullen in the corner. Looking to center, puts it out in front of the shot, and Hyduk covers up as Dornbach came close. Well, Dornbach had a good chance right there. He's standing all alone in front of the net. Gostad tried to take him out. The puck just seemed to dribble through. Hyduk left alone with Dornbach, and Dornbach's got a quick shot. He tried to put it up high, but Hyduk beat him. Some good board work there by Mullen to slip a check and get that pass out front to Dornbach. Four minutes, two seconds left in regulation time. Dornbach against Pitani on the draw. And the Blue Jackets come up with the puck. Richie Bryant around the boards. Zezel going after the puck. He is stopped and Dornbach clears it back into Hibbing territory. This is Bryant again, flipping it down ice. He's looking for Katani. Katani was on side, but he was off his balance and cleared it down. Schwartzbauer covers up with the score. And Ida four, hitting one. This is Hockey 84, live from the St. Paul Civic Center. You see the time remaining, and Hibbing down by three. From the faceoff, Foss knocks it around the boards, and out comes Adina to center, and just getting back to break up the attack was Mike Bittmar with a good play. John Foss knocks it into Hibbing territory and heads for the bench. Around the boards, Kasner with the puck, and it flips up over the glass and out of play. 3.13 left, Lou, and I know the Hornets can taste that birth in the championship game. Well, Hibbing fighting the clock right now. He dining with a commanding lead. Still must make sure that they're not giving Hibbing opportunities to get back in the game. One goal puts them right back in. We'll give them a great deal of life. So he has got to make sure they just keep that puck ahead. They get their own blue line, put it down deep. Here's Nick Andrikin, who has been defensed very well by the Hornets today. Into the zone, Hanson's shot is blocked. Iozo comes up with it. He can't get loose, and Terwilliger strikes back the other way. Jerry Kaler with a good burst of speed. Kaler in, and it looked like a half shot, half pass, as Marty Nanny was loose on the right side, but the puck slid well wide. Well, Kaler had made a good move. He thought he had an open net, then he saw Nanny on the right. 
elected to give to him the pass just a little behind. But a fine play by Kaler. Good attempt. Here comes Jerry Kristoff. Kristoff ties to center. Kaler falls to clear the zone. Puck is still loose. Look out. There's a shot blocked nicely by Heinrich. And the Hornets clear it down ice. Kaler will head for the Adina bench with two minutes, 20 seconds left in regulation time. Anderkin. A pass to Mike Grillo, who just stepped off the bench. But Grillo is checked, and here's one of the stars of this afternoon's game, Ranheim. This time, Ranheim can't get loose. Puck comes back to the point. Nikolov moving in. Oh, Nikolov into the corner, out in front. Nobody there for the Blue Jackets. Back comes Bill Mork for Adina into the zone. Mork out in front, they score! It's 5-1 with a minute 49 left. Well, Mork using his head very, very wisely coming down the ice. He took the puck all the way down the ice. He saw he had the blue line. He's trying to kill the clock. He doesn't want to give it away. He goes deep. Finally, he's going to center it out to Ranheim, who's trailing on the play as he does. It was deflected in off a of defenseman stick. You see Mork going on the outside. Number nine. Now he's going to cut towards the net. He knows Ranheim's in front. He tries to give it to Ranheim. But at the same time, Nikoloff was coming from the back check position going in the slot area, number 13. He puts his stick down to get it right there, and he deflected it through Hajduk's uh, legs. A tough play. Not much he can do about that, but Edina having a good play by Bill Mork there, who took the puck the length of the ice, just trying to kill the clock, not giving that puck away, eventually ending up in a goal. Well, Edina has scored a goal in every period of the tournament so far, and they are on their way to the championship game, unless a miracle happens for Hibbing in the final minute and 43 seconds. There's a shot, and Hyduk had to be sharp. Lost from the point, a shot that Hyduk finally covers up. Well, Edina play with much more confidence in the last two minutes than they did in the previous 12. Hibbing had all the play this period. Edina was a little flustered early. Hibbing sensing that they had to get something applied continuous pressure, but that last goal by Mork seemed to take the steam out of them. Edina now playing with a lot of relaxation and confidence. Here's Tornback from the faceoff just missing. A minute 30 remaining in regulation time. It's 5-1. Jerry Mullen trying to get loose to get a shot on goal. He is checked. And Clojo knocks it down the ice. And the senior John Foss goes back to get it. He's had some injury problems this year. Foss to hit for Dornbach. Loose in the center ice zone. And now John Schwartz for Hibbing. Moves it back into a Dyna territory. Schwartz from the corner. Clojo is parked in front. And Clojo behind the net helping out. And Adina comes up with the puck. Under a minute to play in this hockey game. And the Hornets leading 5-1. to one. And back to get the puck is Chris Bonvino. Around the boards it comes. And cleared out to center. Here's a two-on-one break. Over the line. There's a shot by Johnson out in front. Moore taken down heavily as Johnson tried to feed Moore in front of the net. 30 seconds left. And Adina is headed to the state championship game. Puck golf down ice. And the Blue Jackets can't seem to get any attack mustered in the late stages of this game. They pressed throughout the third period, but could not beat Chris Schwartzbauer. Here's a shot from well out by Jeff Johnson. Five seconds left. Out in front, Sark puts it. Two seconds left. One, and the Diners headed for the state championship tomorrow night. Well, Schwartzbauer in the nets whenever he got tested. Key man today because Hibby started fast and he started the third period fast. Willard Eichel knowing he's going to the final game of the state high school championship again can look to three people especially today. Schwartzbauer in the nets, Williger on defense, and Ranheim up front again. Three exciting, solid hockey players that in both games have come through very, very large for Edina. A lot of people talked about Edina having the ability to shut down their opposition, but Lou, they're scoring goals and they're showing depth. They're going to be a big factor. They certainly are. They've been very, very strong throughout. They've got great balance, as you can see by all the people who have scored goals for their team. But they do have some big people, strong people, capable people in the most important positions. You've got to have good goaltending. You've got to have a strong defenseman. And you need strength up the middle. And Edina has that. Let's go down to Sports Control and rejoin Ralph John Fritz and Mark Rosen. 
Well, Ralph, I think if you were to talk to people before this tournament started, the two two teams that would have selected as favorites would have been Hill Murray and Hibbing, the defending state champions and the number one team. Well, they're both out right now, so it's wide open. We know one team, that'll be the Dino Hornets. Big letdown for Hibbing. They uh, really did control play in that third period, but end up losing it. And, uh, of course, they had only lost once coming in here. That was by one goal, 3-2 to two to Virginia. So uh, uh, Bill Olson and his uh, team, a fantastic season, put a big letdown now at the loss. Live from the St. Paul Civic Center, this is continuing action of the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. So a familiar scene for the Dino Hornets as they once again go to the finals of the state hockey tournament 5-1. to one, The winner over Hibbing this afternoon. Uh, Edina started fast and they never trailed Mark. Well, they scored two goals within 37 seconds. That's the second one there by Jay Moore, a 5'6 sophomore. Tom Twilliger had opened the scoring, made it 1-0 on the power play. And the power play of Edina, as we mentioned earlier, has to be the best in this state tournament. Johnson has the firepower, but Edina really sets up well on the power play. There's Jay Moore's goal. Paul Ranheim, the number one star in today's game, number 11. All in one motion here on the power play. Excellent slap shot, making it 3-1, and that's the goal that really hurt Gibbing. They were unable to come back as Chris, Chris Schwartzbauer shut the door on him the rest of the way. Rozo earlier today, a 3-0 winner over St. Cloud Apollo in consolation play. They go on to the consolation finals. And uh, as we said, Edina, of course, over Hibbing 5-1. It's Edina. An all-metro uh, final again against either Kennedy or Johnson. That game is later tonight, so we'll join you at 7 o'clock. We'll see you then at 7 o'clock tonight right here on WCCO. This is Hockey 84 for the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Hockey 84 has been brought to you by Republic Airlines. Nobody serves our Republic like Republic. By Dodge and your local Viking Land Dodge dealer, where an American revolution is happening now. By the largest savings and banking institution in our part of the country, Twin City Federal, now more than $3 billion strong. And by Northwestern Bell, the information network.